And now on to our dinosaur of the day, Streptospondylus, which was a request from Morgan via Patreon and Discord, so thanks. It was a tetanurin theropod that lived in the late Jurassic in what is now Normandy, France. It looks like a typical theropod. It's got the sharp teeth, powerful legs, short arms. It was midsize, estimated to be 19 and a half feet or 6 meters long and weigh 1,100 pounds or 500 kilograms. The type species is Streptospondylus altdorfensis. It's one of the first named theropods, but not many people know about it. It's been called the first binomial name that refers to a theropod. That's a really confusing way to phrase it. Why did they? Why is it a backwards first binomial name rather than just first named theropod? We didn't know it was a theropod until 2001, really. Oh, gotcha. So that's why it gets a confusing thing. And yeah, it's it's very confusing because it's you know one of the first dinosaur fossils found. It's one of the first dinosaurs described, but just didn't know it was a dinosaur until much later. Yeah. And I think if you're going to take that caveat of first binomial name that refers to a theropod, the unequivocal winner in that one is Scrotum Humanum. Yeah. Which is technically a binomial name, and it refers to a dinosaur, even though it's a mess <laughs> of a genus, but it, it beat it out by at least 100 years. So what happened, I'll, I'll get into the story now, is most of the fossils were part of Abbe Bachelet's private collection in 1770. They ended up with George Cuvier in 1800. So that's how far back this goes. <laughs> yeah, 250 years, mm -hmm. 1770. They were mostly found in Honfleur, France, and they included cranial and postcranial fossils from two teleosaurs, marine crocodilomorphs, and some theropod fossils. Guersant sent the fossils to the museum in Rouen, and that led to George. Cuvier having them. So in 1812, Cuvier added more fossils to this collection, the Bachelet collection. These fossils were found in Le Havre and described in 1776 by Abbe Dicmer. Unfortunately, it's unclear where exactly the Bachelet collection fossils were found. It's only known that they were found near Honfleur. So sometimes I'll refer to these fossils as the Bachelet fossils, sometimes the Honfleur fossils. I assume this is all in France? Yes. The full collection, the Bachelet collection, has never been published, which also makes things a little trickier. Some of these fossils have been associated with Megalosaurus, part of a pubis, tibia, astragalus, and calcanium. So these fossils were examined, the four I just named, at the Natural History Museum in Paris, and those fossils were probably found at the Vachenoir Cliffs, so they're dated Upper Calovian, Lower Oxfordian, Jurassic times, basically. On 1824, Cuvier referred some of the Honfleur fossils to two species of crocodilians based on the length of the snout. One was long, one was short. Hmm. <laughs> and he also talked about the differences in the two vertebral systems that were found in association with the skulls. But he didn't name them. The next year, 1825... Jeffrey St. Hilaire said that based on the cranial fossils, both species were the crocodiliform Stenaeosaurus. And he named one Stenaeosaurus rostromajor, includes the skull, that's the long one, and Stenaeosaurus rostrominor, which includes a complete mandible. <laughs> rostromajor and rostrominor? Yeah. I'm assuming the smaller one is rostrominor? Yeah. These names, though, were only applied to the cranial fossils and not the postcranial fossils, those vertebrae that Cuvier had described. There's a lot of fossils getting moved around to different species in this story. Hmm. In 1832, Christian Eric Hermann von Mayer renamed the short snouted Stenaeosaurus rostrominor as Metriorhynchus jeffroyi. That's a marine crocodile form, and named the long snouted Stenaeosaurus rostromajor, a newly named species that he called Streptospondylus altdorfensis. Interesting. So that's where Streptospondylus creeps in in 1832. Yeah. That's weird. You'd think that Stenaeosaurus would have some sort of naming priority. 
Well, we'll get into that, too. <laughs> Enter Richard Owen. But first, Von Mayer included all the fossils that Cuvier had described, so those vertebrae ones and the skull, and said that those both belong to Streptospondylus altdorfensis. He did not, however, designate a type specimen. Oh, boy. <laughs> now, it turns out that this would make Streptospondylus a mix of theropod vertebrae and the type species of Stenaeosaurus rostro major. And it turned out that Stenaeosaurus rostro major was a composite of parts from two different teleosaur species. Interesting. So we've got a mess here. So I, I guess if Stenaeosaurus is a chimera, then Streptospondylus gets that name to stick around, maybe? Did I guess right? Um, Streptospondylus kind of goes on its own journey. <laughs> 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 so these two different teleosaur species, the parts of the skull, they eventually became Stenaeosaurus edwardsi in 1870. And that name was originally from 1866, but this particular fossil got referred in 1870. And then the other part of the fossil was referred to Metriorhynchus supercilisum in 1973. And that one had originally been named in 1853. But again, this particular fossil got referred in 1973. Gotcha. Uh, just jumping ahead just very briefly, and then we'll jump back. In 2001, Ronan Allain did a whole redescription of Streptospondylus and said that this means that Streptospondylus is basically only known from postcranial fossils. And he said Streptospondylus altdorfensis is valid. So that's kind of the end point is that Streptospondylus altdorfensis is the type species, and it's valid. But we're not quite there yet. We're still in the 1800s. <laughs> so in 1842, Richard Owen said that Streptospondylus altdorfensis should be Streptospondylus rostro major because you're keeping that original species name. Mm -hmm. But then he also created Streptospondylus cuvieri in 1842, and he made the type species this part of a dorsal vertebra that was found in Chipping Norton in Oxfordshire, England, and then he also referred to tooth and neural spine. Part of one vertebra is yep. naming a species. And a tooth and a neural spine. <laughs> but those are only referred. <laughs> well, not only that, these fossils have since been lost, and according to Alain, in 2001, Owen's description of it, quote, holds no scientific value. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would, I would presume so if it's a partial single vertebra. Yep, so streptospondylus Cuvieri, as of today, is considered to be a nomum dubium. But Owen, Richard Owen, did not think of that. So in 1861, Owen said that the skulls and vertebrae from Honfleur, the original fossils, were in a suborder for crocodiles. He did still consider Streptospondylus to be valid, but he started referring all the material to Streptospondylus cuvieri and not Streptospondylus rostro major. And it's unclear why. He never explained, even though he said it, <laughs> we should be using rostro major. Interesting. Yeah, because he only has this partial vertebra, and he's like, all of them are more like this partial vertebra I've found than they are like, you know, a much more complete series from the original. Yeah. And I think because of him, there's other scientists between 1870 to 1923 that also use the name Streptospondylus cuvieri. There are also some mix-ups, like Edward Cope named Lalaps gallicus in 1867, and Frederick von Huhn wrote about Megalosaurus cuvieri in 1909, and both of those are considered to be junior synonyms of Streptospondylus. We get a little more confusion. In 1964, Alec Walker said that Streptospondylus cuvieri material wasn't from Honfleur and synonymized Streptospondylus altdorfensis with Stenaeosaurus rostro major. Oh, Stenaeosaurus making a comeback in the 1960s. Yep. Walker also named the new species Eustreptospondylus oxoniensis, and that genus name means true Streptospondylus. And that's a megalosaur from the late Jurassic. So I guess you can tell where his feelings were <laughs> on this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Eustreptospondylus oxoniensis was found in 1870 in Oxford, England. It's a pretty complete skeleton. Oh, cool. But it was referred to Megalosaurus bucklandi in 1890. Like a lot of things work. A popular wastebasket. Yep. 
Then in 1905 and 1906, Franz Knopsche reassigned that skeleton to Streptospondylus cuvieri, getting that back. And that was odd because the skeleton was nearly complete, but he assigned it to a species with very incomplete remains. Mm -hmm. Walker in 1964 also referred the material that Cuvier himself had described as a new species of Eustreptospondylus, Eustreptospondylus divsensis. That's confusing. Yes. He named something... Something that was thought to be a crocodiliform now is this new species of the true streptospondylus. <laughs> yeah. So when he described it as Steniosaurus, and then I was like, no, it's you streptospondylus. Yep. And he said that the type species of this new species of you streptospondylus was a partial brain case that Jean Pivoteau had described in 1923 that he had assigned in 1923 to Streptospondylus cuvieri. Those were found in Normandy, France. So, again, with these fossils keep changing names. Walker also included the fossils that Owen had said were Streptospondylus cuvieri, as now they're U. Streptospondylus divsensis. So many species names, too. Mm -hmm. Like, not only the genus name changing, but the species name keeps getting all mixed up. So we're not quite done. In 1977, Philippe Taquette and Samuel Wells said that the postcranial fossils that Pivoteau had described, as well as a nearly complete skeleton of Eustreptospondylus that's at the Oxford University Museum, were two different genera. And they named a new one Pivotosaurus, an allosauroid. They named that in 1977. And then the other one they said was still Eustreptospondylus. Now, they only considered that partial brain case to be Pivetosaurus, and that genus name means Jean Pivetot's lizard, and they didn't consider the postcranial fossils to be part of that. So now we jump ahead to 2001. Elaine redescribed Streptospondylus and kind of went through all of the history and talked about the different fossils and how they're related. And he said that there's nothing to indicate that the vertebrae from Hanfor, those original Streptospondylus fossils, were the same taxon as Pivotosaurus. So definitely two different dinosaurs. And he said that Walker's 1964 conclusions with the U. Streptospondylus and kind of lumping all these referred material only made sense if Streptospondylus altdorfensis is a junior synonym of Steneosaurus rostra major. So, Alain, name electotype for streptospondylus that included vertebrae, part of the left pubis, part of the right fibula, the right astragalus, and the right calcaneum, which might sound familiar. Those are those parts I mentioned earlier that had been associated with megalosaurus. He also referred part of a left femur that had been described in 1890. It's not part of the original Bachelet collection. It's actually unknown where this femur was found, but it's got enough similarities that he referred it. So those are the only fossils now known to be streptospondylus. So no skull. No skull. Even though it started with two skulls, although it wasn't called streptospondylus back then. Yep. <laughs> so he found, like I mentioned earlier, streptospondylus altorfensis is valid and that all material should be assigned to that species, no other species. He also said that Streptospondylus and Eustreptospondylus were closely related. They're part of Megalosauroidea. So the type species, again, and the only valid species is Streptospondylus altdorfensis. And the genus name Streptospondylus means reversed vertebra. And it refers to the vertebrae being different from typical crocodile elements. The species name altdorfensis refers to teleosaur, those marine crocodilomorphs, cranial fossils, having been found in Altdorf, which von Mayer had thought were the same taxon as the fossils found near Hanfleur. And von Mayer's the one who made that name, so makes sense. Now, there have been other names or other species of Streptospondylus. Richard Owen named most of them. <laughs> <laughs> he also named Streptospondylus major in 1842. Streptospondylus Recentor and Streptospondylus mayori in 1851, and Streptospondylus grandis in 1854. And all of those fossils are now thought to be iguanodont. Hmm, very different. Yeah. 
<laughs> in 2010, Gregory Paul informally renamed Magnosaurus as Streptospondylus nethercomensis, but most people still consider Magnosaurus to be a valid genus. And Magnosaurus and Streptospondylus have been found to be sister taxa. Interesting. So that is the long, convoluted history of Streptospondylus, which could have been the oldest dinosaur named, but it just wasn't thought to be a dinosaur early enough. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash or click the link on the left.